Assalamualaikum Assalamualaikum Good afternoon uh, This is the University is really nice. Forgive me. Are you breaking up, Jamil? I can't hear you. <laughs> so, writing a thesis. Oh, sorry, Jamil. Uh, can others hear me? Can you all hear me? You're breaking up a bit. I don't know, is it me or everyone else? Hello? Hello, Jamila, we cannot hear you. Can, can the rest of you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, Jamila, can you try to say something? Can he hear? Can Jamila continue? Yeah, you can hear me, doctor. Okay, now, now, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, so in this series of virtual coffee sessions, last two weeks, we had uh, 
the academy uh, in the sessions. And today we are having one of our lecturers to talk to you. I'm happy to mention yeah, that she is one of my supervisors as well. Thanks to the Language Academy UTM Prayer and the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities UTM for providing us this platform to share our research experience and knowledge. Let us now move on to today's topic. Writing a thesis abstract is not an easy job. And any average person can speak and write at length, short, sweet, and to the point. Clear writing comes from clear thinking. This is what we are going to experience and learn today. Have your thesis, dissertation, or even research paper abstracts. Please keep them ready so that you can always compare how an abstract should be and how you have written it. Asalaamu Alaikum, Doctor. Asalaamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Prof, uh, can you give me a few minutes because I need to introduce you to those who yes, do not yes, know no you. Problem. Thank you, Prof. Okay, Associate Professor Dr. Sarima Samsuddin is currently the Director of Social Sciences and Humanities in University Technology Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Her expertise covers a vast area in English language teaching and applied linguistics. She graduated with a BSc okay. in Computer Mathematics from Carlton University, Carlton University, Canada in 1988, and then completed a postgraduate diploma in teaching English as a second language at Mara Institute of Technology, Malaysia in 1992. Language took her to the United Kingdom and there she did an MSc in teaching English for specific purposes as Aston University, Birmingham in 1997. Uh, later, she pursued her PhD in English language teaching and applied linguistics at University of Warwick, UK, and became a doctor of philosophy in 2000. Dr. Sarima was awarded a number of scholarships for her higher education, her higher studies, and many grants funding and honors for her research contribution. Among the many of the uh, recognition and honors, a few recent ones are the Excellent Service Award, which was uh, which she received last year for the year 2018 uh, from Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, a Silver Award for the innovation entitled Learning Highway Engineering Course through MOOC platform, and accessibility, at the new 10 in 2018, she also received a bronze award for the innovation entitled Implementation of Blossoms Modules um, for Highway Engineering Course to Enrich Students' Experience at the new Academia Learning Innovation for Education 4.0 in the same year. In 2017, she achieved a bronze award at International Invention. Invention, Innovation, and Design, ID, uh, 2017. In addition, she was honored with the Services Development <laughs> Award for 2018 from UTM for her 20-year services as an academic. She has presented in many local and international conferences, written research papers to non-index and index journals, written book chapters, as well as books. She has been a keynote speaker at various conferences around the world. She has also she, uh, has been serving as a reviewer of various journal articles and edited books and uh, an editorial board member of several journals. Are eight and 164 respectively. She is involved in some national research grant projects and UTM research grant projects at various capacities from a member to a leader. She has had 16 PhD students and nine master's students until now, and among them, nine doctoral students and seven master's students have already successfully completed their studies. She also serves as an internal and an external examiner for a number of postgraduate students. In addition, 
to the supervision, Dr. Sarima has taught several courses for both undergraduate and postgraduate students. Okay, now is time for Dr. Sarima Shamsuddin. Before she starts, all the Webex users, please mute your microphone unless it is really necessary. In the meantime, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in your chat box or here Webex and comment section on Facebook. Please fill in the registration form that will be shared shortly. Thank you. Doctor, you can proceed now. Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi and good evening. Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Is my voice clear? Yes, yes. Thank you very much to everyone. Uh, all of you from UTM, or do we have any participants out of UTM? From UTM, Kaya. Yeah, mostly from UTM. Some from JP, eh? Some of you are from JP, some of you are from uh, do, do we only have participants from faculty, but social sciences and humanities, or are there students from other faculty? Can you just type? Oh, okay, I can see. That's from MJIIT. Okay, good. Faculty Social Science. So, we do have... so there are no, no students from uh, out of UTM, eh? Mm. Can everybody uh, switch off their, um, their microphone? I think there's some background yeah, noise. Okay, so please mute all your... Um, Microphones. Oh. You know why there's this echoing sound? Where is it coming from? No idea. Yes, the host. <laughs> you can force the mute button. I think, uh, Mr. Lukman. Can the host mute the force mute the button? Because I'm not so sure whether I can do that. Okay, is that better? All right. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bishrahni sadmi wa yasirni amri wa hlul minisani yafqan qawli. Okay, so inshallah this afternoon I will share a bit about the thesis extract. So before I start, I will try to share my screen, okay, with you, All right? Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see, Doctor. Okay. Yes. So, right. Okay. So this is my. This is gonna be the. Because uh, uh, I'm not so sure whether I can see your chat. So if I were to ask something like you know, can you like you, you know, re respond? Okay. So this is. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, we have already as um. Oh yeah. It's, I would like to thank uh Hanun Jamila Hanun for actually moderating uh our session. Um, and Alhamdulillah, we have done uh, I think three knowledge sessions with the um, the uh, post our postgraduate students. So this I think this is the first uh, knowledge sharing session with um, the supervisors or the lecturers supervising uh, students. So um, although this is the last thing that you would write <laughs> when you're actually writing your thesis. But it's the first topic that we are covering um, in this knowledge sharing session. Okay, it is quite an important part, even though it's like one paragraph. <laughs> it's important. Okay. Right. So, what is an abstract? Um, I'm sure everyone has written somehow or rather an abstract. Uh, any one of you have not, who have never actually written any abstract? Can you just drop a line, never ever? I mean, an abstract could be, you know, an abstract of an article or it could be your 
thesis. If you are PhD student, I'm sure you have written an abstract list for your master's dissertation, correct? So if you have written any articles, normally if you submit an article for general publication, they will also require you to write an abstract uh, for this article. Okay, so basically, um, it's a brief, concise and a brief summary or version of an essay. Sometimes when you're writing an essay, you might also write in um, an abstract for the essay. Um, could be articles, reports, yeah, uh, dissertation or thesis. So it should be brief, it should be concise and it should be an abridged summary. So it is basically the first section um, of the write-up of the genre. Okay, it comes just uh, after the title, okay, normally, okay, after the title of your write-up and it comes before the introduction so although it's the first part of your right arm first section but it's the last thing that you write okay normally but sometimes to experience uh let's say you are about to submit a paper uh, a conference paper you want to present a paper at a conference and normally they would ask you an abstract yeah, it could be the first thing that you do because you're thinking like, I'm what I'm going to write. You have already conducted your research. You, you know what all, it's all about. It's just trying to, you know, organize your thoughts in, 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 in a bridge form in, in one uh, paragraph. So it's normally 150 to 300 words. But again, it depends on the institution, on the faculty, um, or on the journal, like, you know, to decide what would be the minimum number and what would be the maximum number of words um, that they would require for the, um, for the abstract. So an abstract is very, very, very useful, okay, for, for a reader because it provides a preview of the write-up. Let's say you're, you, you've written um, um, a journal article and and um and then you want to give the reader an overview or a preview of what you you actually wrote in the article so it, it's a good preview it gives people an idea of what the content is all about so a good abstract will be an abstract that would like sort of summarize the whole thing like in a nutshell when people read your abstract they they would know what it's all about the, and and then uh, how you conducted it, how you conducted your research, if you're reporting about your research, uh, what your findings were, and then, you know, what you can conclude from that or what you gain from it, or what would be the, uh, what you call it, um, recommendation that you're making, or uh, you might be suggesting future research that can be done. So it contains, it should contain salient information, important information uh, from the write-up itself. Yeah, be the article uh, 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 of, of the thesis or dissertation. So it's self-contained because, you know, people do not have to read the whole written discourse because uh, uh, it, it summarizes everything and people would understand. So especially for, for students who are going to start off their journey, okay, their PhD or master's uh, by research journey, you will have to search many, many journal articles and you will be also looking for theses and dissertation that are almost similar to the area of your study. So I don't think you would want to read every single article that you find, but the one way, one um, well, smart way, uh, you should be working smart rather than working hard, you know, one smart way to actually identify relevant uh, journal articles that sh you should read in depth would be to skim and scan uh, the abstracts. Of course, you would search via the, the title of the journal article, yeah, the topic, the area, but uh, sometimes it would not suffice just looking at the title. You would have to uh, read the abstract to see how relevant 
those articles would be, you know, for you to read in depth, for you to uh, do a critical review, which would be, you know, inshallah, God willing, you know, another uh, talk that I would be giving in this knowledge uh, sharing session. So it allows the researcher, you as a, a PhD or master's student, to actually gauge and decide if the particular article or thesis or dissertation would be relevant to your area of research. So yes, it's the last thing that you write. Yes, it's the first thing that you see. But I think it is very, very, a very important part of, of the uh, this, of the write-up. Okay. Um, not so sure why it's not moving. Okay. Mm. Oops, okay, sorry. Okay, right. So this is what I'm, 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 I'm uh, what I meant. Uh, this is like, you know, it, it summarizes uh, nicely the structure of a thesis of a, or an article. You can see this is taken from Westbrook and Bakker. Okay, so you would have the title of the thesis or journal article. And then closely, it is followed by the abstract. Of course, in the thesis, you would have acknowledgement. They were of course and support. They were basically start with the title of the thesis and then followed by the abstract. And then you would have the introduction chapter or section of the article or thesis. And then you would have the other chapters following it. Like if it is thesis, you would have the literature review section um, and methodology, okay, which is the body part, body section of your thesis. And then you would have the findings and of course the last part would be the conclusion part of the article or the concluding uh, chapter uh, discussion conclusion okay so right the structure of thesis okay for you dm students i would like to draw your attention to this important website okay every every research student who is studying in utm you should have this very important manual, okay? It's called the Thesis Guideline. They've already uh, produced many editions, but I believe this is the latest edition of the uh, of the Thesis Guideline. So if you're writing, writing your thesis, okay, uh, SPS or the School of Graduate Studies has already published it and you can download it from the, from the internet, from this link, from the website. So I believe this link leads you to the quite recent version of the thesis guideline, which was uploaded on the 25th of May this year. Okay, it's the fifth edition, right? So there's a section within this um, thesis guideline. There's a particular, very small section on, on UTM thesis abstract. So it's um, what it says written there is that you should start with a brief, brief theme uh, sentence, okay, in your abstract. So when you're writing your abstract for, for your uh, thesis to be um, submitted to, to SPS, okay, for, for Viva or to your faculty for Viva, you, you should have a, a theme sentence which would orientate the reader and give an overview, overall issue. Uh, that is being addressed in the thesis, and this should be followed by the purpose of the research that you are uh, writing about, and then it should followed by an explanation of the importance of the study, okay, at least or practical importance of the study, and you should also describe briefly the methodology that you have used it, right? And of course, okay, if you have a method, you have conducted the, the study, you should have findings. So, right, in the website, you should always, also, you must summarize the, the main findings. Not, I'm sure you have a huge number of findings um, in, your, uh, in your study, in your research, but uh, in an abstract, because you have limited amount of space, uh, you just highlight the main findings of your research. And you should also not forget to include the 
concluding statement. Okay, the concluding statement or the conclusion part of your abstract it should indicate the uh, that by your study. Okay, I'm sure you have mentioned uh, gaps that you're filling in, um, gaps in the literature that you're filling in um, uh, for your research. Okay, so highlight that contribution and highlight the practical uh, or managerial implications of the study's finding where appropriate. Right, so for UTM students, I'm sure most of you know it, or if you're new to this, you should be aware that you have to write your abstract in two languages, okay? In English, it's a must, and you have to get it translated to Bahasa Melayu. Okay, for your information, the Faculty of Social Science and Humanities do offer uh, proof, reading, proof reading and not translating. <laughs> you have your abstract and then get it translated. So we have the service to proofread uh, the English and the Malay abstracts. Okay, you have to get it proofread. And it has to be um, uh, um, approved, signed by the proofreader. Anun, can I have a few minutes off? I think I need to get some water. Wow. Right. So yes, two uh two languages, yeah, English and Malay. I'm not so sure if you are writing your abstract in Arabic whether you should have it written in three languages or just Arabic and Malay, so that you have to consult your, uh, your faculty. Okay, and you only, you are only allowed to write your abstract on one page. Okay, so if it, if you have, if you have like two, two abstracts, one in English and one in Bahasa Melayu or Malay language, so of course like, you know, one page for your uh, English abstract and one page for your uh, Bahasa Melayu or Malay abstract. So it should be single or oh, and a half spacing. Okay, is that clear? Um, are you following me? Guys, hello? Okay, yeah, yeah. thank you. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that my student? Is that? Oh, I see Aisha as well. Okay, thank you, Aisha. So, Aisha, you're in Saudi or Pakistan? We are following you. Okay, good. So, Aisha, go. Aisha, we are enjoying it. We are enjoying it. We are enjoying it. Okay. Okay, I don't you. know. I'm, I'm struggling to actually move my slide. I don't know why. Okay, right. So this is the exact example of of the abstract that you can find on the on the link. Okay, so they are showing you one version, uh, the English version of the abstract. Okay, in the uh, UPM uh, thesis guideline, and this is the Malay. You can see like there are like four lines of spacing required after. Uh, the heading abstract and then there's supposed to be half an inch of space okay on the first line of the abstract similarly you know for the malay abstract the same format so everything should be on one page only all right next okay right types of abstract okay, this uh, i've taken um my most of my notes from three main sources right so you see there are uh, two books and one uh, thesis guide and this is from the book, by local writers, Asian people like this. It's from the book, Entitled Engineering Your Report from Start to Finish, How to Engineer Your Report by Krishna, Nyong, uh, Katpalya, and Tam. Okay, uh, they suggest that there are two types of abstracts. Well, this, I'm sure out there, there might be other forms, but in, in general, there are two. One is called the informative abstract. The other one is called the descriptive abstract. Okay, informative abstract uh, commonly summarize experimental research reports, article or thesis. So if your, uh, your research or your study is mostly experimental, it's highly likely that it's the type of abstract that you're gonna write is informative abstract. 
So you'll be replicating the, the important sections or the major sections of your write-up, okay, of your pieces or your articles, and you'll be organizing it in the same way. Okay, right. I saw a chat message, but I couldn't read it very quickly. What, what is it about? Can you give me a shout? What was written? I've got to escape to see the chat message. Okay. Okay. Hi, uh, Jamila. Are you there? Yes, Doctor. Uh, what was it? What was the question about? I saw a chat message, but because I'm sharing the slide, so I couldn't really read it in time. Uh, no. Is that something important? <laughs> I think it can be read. Okay, so can I continue? Yes, Dr. All yes, right, thank you. Okay. So as I was saying, it replicates, it copies the major sections of the thesis um, and it will extract important information from each section of the right of our thesis. So basically, uh, an informative abstract would consist of four major sections. Okay? The introduction section of the abstract uh, method, results and conclusion. So you'll be basically summarizing this, the IMRD. Um, sections. Okay, descriptive abstract. Uh, it's it commonly summarizes the theoretical research reports, articles, and thesis. If your thesis is of a uh, of this nature, you know some some thesis are they are basically theoretical rather than experimental. So your type of abstract would be descriptive abstract. Uh, you'll be focusing on the objectives of the research and you will be um oh there's a lag okay so uh, you'll be basically focusing on the objectives and you'll be describing the main topics in the write-up uh, and, and normally this type of abstract will be relevant for those who are writing their thesis uh, which is related to design, okay, it could be a computer or maybe engineering, okay, something of software related research articles. Okay, uh, in this case, yes, yes, don't worry <laughs> later. Okay, we'll be sharing, inshallah. Um, and conclusion and recommendation uh, would be optional, okay, for descriptive. So I'll be showing some samples that I, I got from the book. All right. Okay, so this will be the four sections that I mentioned. Okay, the four sections will be IMRC. So when you're writing abstract, all right, you follow the IMRC. I'm sure some of you are familiar with IMRD, IMRAD, I M R A D. I M R A D. This is a, a site. Okay, just just to share some information with all of you. Uh, this is the normal norm the normal abbreviation that you would use when you're writing the the full article or the thesis. Okay, you would normally follow the I M R E Imrat um um yeah sections, um introduction method, uh, results analysis and discussion. So that's the IMRAP but for abstract. This is one format that you can follow when you're writing the abstract. Bear in mind, okay, you should have the introduction section okay, of your uh, abstract. Okay, next would be in, in linguistic, we call it moves. Okay, <laughs> there are like four moves. Uh, this uh, Krishnan Jong Katpali uh, Tam um, uh, proposed uh, four moves. Okay, when you're writing an abstract. So uh, you have the introduction move, the method move, the results move, and the conclusion move. Okay, to most, uh, this will be the sub moves. Uh, sub moves, uh, there are three sub moves. Um, this one is giving background information in the introduction. You can have these uh, different sections. 
parts in the introduction of your abstract. You might be giving background information about the, the research. Uh, you could also indicate the gap okay, that you're trying to fill uh, in your research, okay, a gap to previous research, and uh, stating the purpose or objectives or research questions uh, of your study. So that will be the first move. Okay? In the introduction, you can have all three or maybe one or two of the three sub moves. Okay. The second move will be the method section, okay, uh, where you would describe the methods or in some other cases, the materials. If you are uh, designing something, you might be uh, presenting the materials that you're, that you're using um, in your study. R is uh, presenting the findings or the results. And C, C section would be where you would state the conclusions and recommendations, okay? So I, M, R, C, remember that, eh? very, very easy. So when you're writing abstract, uh, you can follow this, uh, this format. Okay. But this is an example given the book. I'm sorry if it's not very clear, but the idea is that, yeah. This is an example of a report. Portable emergency ventilation system. Engineering. <laughs> okay. Portable and emergency ventilation system. Um, okay, this is comedy type of abstract. Yeah. See the introduction. It has all three sub moves. There's a background to the study. Uh, there's a section where they in the research in the object. Section. Okay, and then you have the method M, results and conclusion. I'll just read. This example of a portable emergency ventilation system involves the separation of oxygen from the atmospheric air by passing the air through a membrane module. So, a bit of background to the study on portable emergency ventilation system. And then went on to the gap. The ventilation systems available at present are bulky and are not able to produce a stream of high quality oxygen and rich air. So that's the, the gap. That's the problem. Okay. Is it, it could be a problem statement as well. Okay. The ones at present are bulky and it doesn't produce high quality air. Okay. So what's the objective? Going on to the object. So in this project, the volumetric flux of oxygen through a single stream single stage membrane module of a portable emergency ventilation system was the object. Uh, and the method. How did this researcher conduct the uh, research? Three membrane materials, okay, talking about materials, fluorinated, oh, this is mouthful, polytrimethylsililpropyne, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> polyethylene and polydimethylene, whatever, okay, <laughs> were chosen for the study. So that's the method or the materials used. Okay, and then uh, the third section of the uh, third move uh, is all about the results, okay? So when, <laughs> actually for your information, I'm also um, one of the lecturers who, always proofread uh, UTM students' um, abstracts. So when they are taught to submit their thesis, they, they need to, to submit it to us for proofreading. Of course, it's not free. You've got to pay a certain fee. So we have loads and loads of compound nouns and abbreviations like this one. So in the results, PT MSP was found to be the best membrane material to be used in the portable emergency ventilation system, a requirement of 40% of oxygen-enriched air at a flow rate of 8 liters per minute was identified when the pressure differentiated across module is at no idea what that is. It goes for, is that omega? Was the ratio of the pressure on the feed side of the membrane to the pressure on the permit side of the membrane. For this requirement, the membrane area required and the dimensions of the module were determined. Okay, and the conclusion is evidence from the findings that a membrane module of such dimensions would result in a smaller and lighter emergency ventilation system. Because you can see, right, there are four major sections 
of this informative abstract. Yeah. Uh, this is the other type, which is the descriptive um, abstract. You have the uh, objective. It starts off with the objective of the study and then followed by talking about the description of, uh, of the major topics because for descriptive abstracts, uh, the organization might be a bit different. They might be describing the um, major topics in the in the thesis or article. So the major topics for this particular descriptive abstract are material, fabrication, and testing. So like, you know, if you're into software engineering or en engineering, you know, you might have all these elements and you have results and in this case, they have a conclusion and recommendation. Okay, right. So you can see it starts off with this project involved the design, fabrication, and testing of a new unilateral blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm not going to dwell into that. Okay, so just to show you how it looks like, okay, how a descriptive abstract looks like. Okay. Ask. Okay. Okay, and, and it's not, um, I'm not going to just give a one-way one way, uh, communication task, but I'm going to give you assignment as well. So I will be showing you a thesis abstract, which is in the thesis guideline, UTM SPS uh, thesis guideline. So I want you to identify its sentence in the following thesis. Okay, you go to IMRC. Okay. This is the exact abstract, the sample given in the thesis guideline. Okay, I've given numbers to every sentence in the abstract all together. Can you see this clearly, guys? Can you see this abstract on your computer? Good. So all together, there are nine sentences. I would like you to identify which sentences okay would be the introduction section okay and which ones would be the remember the formula i followed by m r c okay correct good <laughs> there you go so which sentences can would would be the uh I section and which ones would be the ones and which are the R's in which sentence or sentences are the C. Can I give you what three minutes or five to read and just identify which sentences are I, M and which are R and which are C. Okay. Let's see if I do it. Oh, you will not see it, isn't it? It will be smaller. I'm not so sure I would be able to see the chat. Anyway, okay. Have fun. No, you can type your answer on the on the chat. Right. For R, you can put like which which sentence sentence one, two, three, four, five, and I and then M would be what? Seven eight uh four five six R would be seven eight, for example, and then C would be nine, you know. Okay, just so that you're not bored, I'll try to read it along as you read it. Okay, the purpose of the study is to investigate the application of genetic algorithm. There you go, another abbreviation, GA, in modeling linear and nonlinear dynamic systems and develop an alternative model structure selection algorithm based on GA. Orthogonal least square, well as gradient. Send method was used as a benchmark for the proposed algorithm. Model structure selection based on modified genetic algorithm, MGA, has been proposed in the study. 
to reduce problems of premature convergence in simple GA, bracket SGA. Effect of different combination of MGA operators on the performance of the development model was studied and the effectiveness and shortcomings of MGA were parameter. Results were compared between SGA, MGA, and benchmark OLS method. It was discovered that the similar number of dynamic terms in these cases, MGA performs better than SGA in terms of split potential solution. Is the three minute up? Are you guys done? I can't see your answers. Did you share your answers on the screen? Well, then, yeah, five and six M. Would you like me to show the answer now? Do you need a bit more time? Hello? <laughs> Problem? Oh, God. Okay, right. Okay, three, two, one. All right. Okay, did you get the anyone who got the 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 same answer? As you can see, introduction is the first sentence. So earlier on, uh, three different sub moves were proposed for the introduction. Um, background, gap, and purpose. So there's only one, one sentence for I, that's the purpose. Okay, that's followed by the methodology. All right, quite a lengthy, lengthy. Yeah, yeah, it can be, yeah. Conclusion can be include conclusion and recommendations. So R, so that will be the results, yeah. So sentence one, introduction, sentence two, three, four, and five. Uh, all are the methodology section, and you've got six, seven, eight, uh, are all the results. 